Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Moore, and I'm an alcoholic. I'm sorry for those of you who are expecting somebody else, and and the only person that Glenn could get at the last moment was me. <laughs> but uh, but I'm 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 glad to be here. He, and he told me that speaker meetings sometimes take 50 minutes. I can probably I'd be surprised if I manage much over five. Um, I, I've, I've um, my sobriety date is um, January the 14th, 2012. And um, I, I, I say that, um, I, I can remember uh, the first time I came into a meeting and uh, somebody uh, um, announced that they had six days, I, I thought they were bragging. And uh, because I couldn't put together any days at all. And, and um, um, but but let me let me start a little bit more at the beginning. Uh, I, uh, I I am I'm, I'm born and raised in the South, so when something goes wrong, I say it went north, not 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 south. And and uh, I uh, I started uh, I started drinking. Um, the first drink I had really the first time I, I got drunk really didn't count. Uh, uh, because I really didn't, I really didn't start having a problem until the the next time I drank, uh, and I was 14 years old, and um, I've been hooked on it ever since. Uh, uh, it's been it's been my buddy, um, got me through uh, um, three children, all girls. Uh, got me. Uh, uh, I still have the same wife. Uh, and, and as incredible as that sounds, as, as, as sick as I have made her, um, uh, she's uh, she, she's recovering uh, quite well as, as well. Uh, it was about uh, the first time I found the rooms uh, was not because I was ready to find the rooms, but it was because my my wife was ready for me to find the room and. Uh, uh, it was around 1990, 1991, something like that. And, uh, and she said, um, um, I believe we need to go to a marriage counselor. And I, and I thought to myself, what I say to the inside, you know, well, that's a good idea. Somebody needs to straighten this bitch out. And marriage counselor is just the right person. And, um, so, so I went, and when, when, when the marriage counselor found out how much I was drinking, she sent my wife home, and she made a deal with me. Uh, uh, she said, you're going to have to go to a, a, a rehab, and I said, I'm not going to do it. And she said, you have to. You have no other choice. I said, try me. She said, all right, uh, and she set me up to fail. I didn't know it then, but I know it now. She said, every week, I want you to cut your drinking in half, so starting today, you, you have to start cutting it in half because I was literally scared to not drink. I was afraid that I would die if I did not drink. I, I thought something awful would happen. And that's, that's the, that's where I was mentally. And, um, but, but I thought, well, I can cut it in half and I can do that to try and stay out of rehab. And, and she said, and I'll see you next Friday. And so every Friday, uh, uh, was, uh, you know, cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half. And, and, and and it came down to I was I was down to uh, I was down to three um, beers, and she said, "Did you did, did you manage three beers this week?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "But they were talls," and she said, "That's it, you got to go." And I said, "Well, I might have bent the rules a little bit, you know, I still did." And she said, "Well," she said, "You can quit at three beers and not go into the DTs or anything, so you you have to stop. I'll see you next Friday." And um, so next Friday I came in, and uh, at the time we live in a very small town in Greenville, Tennessee, and that's about 70 miles away from Knoxville, about uh, 30 miles away from the Tri Cities. I don't know if any of y'all know anything, but but uh, I, I am uh, an Appalachian hillbilly. I would show you uh, my feet, but I, it's I'd rather not, because uh, <laughs> we are most of us most of us have started wearing shoes up here. We're right at the foothills of the mountain, about 70 miles away from Asheville. And there wasn't any meetings in Greenville. Well, I guess there was. Uh, the, only, the, only, the only problem was is it was, uh, it was about four people, and two of them were my relatives. <laughs> so, 
So uh, I started going to a, a meeting up in Johnson City, and um, uh, I, I stayed there. Uh, I went there and, and told everybody, you know, for the next several years, six or seven years, exactly what they ought to do and what they ought to think and how they ought to spend their money and everything else. And uh, then, I, then for some, then I, I quit going to meetings. I don't remember exactly why, uh, but I, I did. Um, and um, I lasted another uh, about four years. I lasted about a little less than that, three and a half years, something like that, uh, without going to meetings. And then uh, we, I took a motorcycle trip with the, with the guys. And I told my wife, I said, you know, it's been 10 years since I've had a drink. I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to have a drink on this trip. And she looks at me and she says, I don't believe that's a good idea. I said, well, it's been 10 years. I don't think about drinking anymore. Now, who else would think about drinking two weeks ahead of time before they go on the trip than an alcoholic? But that's what I did. And I, so I went on this trip and, and I drank. And I said to myself, and oh, now I'll quit when I get back home. Well, uh, we, we didn't we didn't uh, have have a routine, but we sure did have a, a big party. Uh, and I thought, well, the, the the vacation does include the day you get home. We were all on motorcycles and we got back home. So I, I drank that first night. We got back home. And the second night, I uh, amazingly, I was back to some old habits. Um, uh, hiding half of what I drink or think I was hiding it. I, I know better now. Uh, uh, and uh, and started drinking again, and, and for the next 14 years, 13 years, for the next 13 years, I only missed three days of not drinking. Uh, um, one of them uh, was uh, I was in Florida in a great big town, and uh, it's where my oldest daughter lived, and, and uh, we uh, we. Uh, uh, we went down to uh, uh, visit, and of course, I had grandchildren, and, and uh, I had to, I couldn't drink in front of the grandchildren, so I was saying, oh, we, we don't want you to stay up past your bedtime, <laughs> trying to get them to go to bed so I could go to the store. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the blue law or something, I don't remember what it was, but uh, I found myself in a dry county. Now, now, it was already 11 o'clock at night before I was able to go, you see. And and uh, and that was part of the problem. And I said, I said, well, how about if I just uh, uh, put forty dollars down on the floor and walk off with this case of beer? And he, he said, uh, he said we'd have to call the police on you. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, maybe I better not do that. So that was one of the nights. The other night, we had we were on motorcycles once again. It was just me and my wife, and we went into the middle of nowhere in the middle of Tennessee, someplace. Uh, and, and we were supposed to stay at this uh, uh, a place that was in the middle of this. Uh, 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 and the, the, when I got there, I, I realized that they didn't sell beer on on, uh, uh, on these campground type things. And the, the ride back was uh, 35 miles. And uh, I rode back 35 miles, 70 miles round trip. I told my wife she needed to uh, take a nap. She was tired and uh, convinced her of that. And I hopped back on the motorcycle and, and went uh, went 70 miles round trip. My, you might be an alcoholic if you ever go 70 miles just to get a beer. Um, um, I, I could tell. I could. I could. I could tell you a lot of the other things that made me recognize that I was an alcoholic. Uh, one that Glenn seems to enjoy the most is. Uh, uh, when I first came to the room, when I first came to the rooms, uh, I'm, I'm skipping again. Don't don't try. And, I, I don't. I'm not. I, I didn't plan anything. I'm just talking. So don't don't hold me chronologically to anything. But but uh, when I was uh, uh, when I was much younger, um, um, when I when I came to Alcoholics Anonymous this time, like I said, it was, first time was about ten years. And what was in the nineties? It was thirteen more years. And 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 now. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to I'm coming to AA again, and uh, I can't uh, remember uh, uh, exactly that first meeting. Um, 
But I do remember uh, uh, coming, not because I was ready. I wasn't ready the first time. It was a marriage camp. The second time I was, I came because uh, um, my wife and my daughters and so on were ready for me to come. As a matter of fact, my, my youngest daughter, what spurred is she cut her wrist. And they had her in a, she did, she did a pretty good job of it. And uh, uh, she blamed me. Uh, and, and so we went down to Nashville to, I didn't know this when we went down to pick her up. Uh, we had to go down there to get her out of the hospital. And uh, uh, we meet in front of the counselor and the counselor says, now you will go to Al-Anon meetings. And I knew what, I knew what that meant. Uh, she blamed me. And uh, so, I, so I thought, you know, I've got, you know, I'm going to have to do something. And uh, so what I did that, that, uh, that day that we picked her up is I knew I couldn't go back to her house because I had to drink and she'd just cut her wrist because of me. So I told them that I had to get back home. So I, I left the two of them down there, my wife and my daughter in Nashville where she lived. And so I, could, so I drove back home so I could drink that night. Um, it's, um, it, it was, uh, it was shortly after that, that I said, I'll, I'll go give me 10 days. And I like to drink myself to death in the next 10 days. <laughs> but I can remember the one thing I do remember about that first meeting this time uh, about 10 years ago, uh, well, a little over 10 years ago, uh, well, as yeah, it was closer to 11 years ago, because I went to meetings for three months, uh, still drinking. Uh, I would, uh, but I'd wait till after the meetings, thought I was hiding it once again. And then uh, one of the persons that was there originally told me, I guess it was six months or a year ago. She said, boy, you sure did smell when you, when you were, and, and, and I, and it made me start thinking about all the times that I was going someplace where I, I was, I caught myself in some place that, that I couldn't drink and what I would do, you know, we used to go to church, for instance, on Wednesday night, and I'd, I'd, I'd always drink a few beers before, you know, a few extra real quick before we would go. And, and for, for them, for, 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 for people to smell it, and I hadn't even started drinking that day, I can only imagine how bad I smelled to most of the people when I, I went to those Wednesday night church services and so on. Um, I, uh, I went to, um, so I, I could remember, I, I can remember going, to, uh, I'd already had six, seven years in, in AA, but, but I can remember going to the meeting this first time and I sat right there by the door like everybody was going to bite me or something. I didn't know what I was so afraid of, but I was. And sitting right next to me was a, a roommate. Uh, he didn't recognize me and I didn't recognize him, uh, uh, Gene. And, and Gene and I re reacquainted ourselves with each other. And, and I was really glad that he was there. He said, uh, uh, and he was sitting right next to me at the door and, and, and everybody had shared and it was, a, it was a, and so Gene says, I'm, I'm here by accident. And uh, he said, it was an automobile accident. <laughs> and I just, I thought that was great. Uh, and, and, and I knew right then we were going to become good friends. I didn't know how good I can remember. Um, he, he didn't have a driver's license. I did. And, and, uh, so, uh, I would pick him up and take him to me and take him back home. And he lived, he lived, uh, uh what was saying East Tennessee, a fur piece from the meetings and we'd have a chance to talk. And, um, and once I was just uh, whining and complaining uh, about my wife and, and things uh, that she was doing wrong and blaming her, just like I, I did my parents for the longest time. But now I've moved it over to her. I mean, I had to because my daddy has been dead 30 years. So I had to move it over to somebody. So I guess that was my wife. And I was complaining about, you know, and uh, now Gene, he lived alone. He lived by himself. He was divorced and, 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 uh, uh, and he never said a word to me, negative or otherwise. He just listened very intently. And, and when we got to the rooms, he never brought up a topic. He never once uh, said, uh, uh, brought one up. But, but when they asked, uh, does anybody have something they'd like to talk about? He said, uh, uh, yes, I'm Gene, and I would like to uh, talk uh, about uh, codependency. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought, what a friend, you know, what a friend that is going to make me sit here and listen to uh, the problems that my wife is having that I caused that I didn't understand. And, and he thought that this would, would help me a lot. And, 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 it, and it did. It did. Uh, uh, somehow, just a, a few months into this program, in the first time I was in AA, I knew everything. Second time, I wasn't as sick as the rest of you all. I mean, I hadn't had a DUI or this, that, and the other, but I got to, uh, and, and I told that for months, I told that, that I could not accept the uh, second part of the first step because, uh, you know, I had cars in the driveway. I'd never had a DUI. I'd never been arrested, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Hadn't been hospitalized, came close to being institutionalized, but um, um, but uh, but he said that uh, but, uh, but but we we had that discussion and it made me realize that uh, it, it started me on a path of realizing that um, if uh, if everybody else has a problem with me then it might be me and and so I started looking at myself instead of looking at my other my parents, like I did, my wife, my children. If you had my life, you'd drink too, that sort of thing. And uh, uh, was was in a very good group. Uh, it was a, uh, I went to three different groups. I went to 12, 13 meetings a week uh, uh, because I was just fascinated, absolutely fascinated with the program and the people that were in it. They were They were so wise. They were so intelligent. They knew things that I didn't know. Uh, um, you know, how to live, how to get along with others, and so on. And I'm thinking, how did they get all this out of this program? Because all I learned to do uh, for for the first 10 years was not drink. And then I didn't learn much because then I started drinking again. How did they learn so much? And I'm still, I still, it still fascinates me. I'm still in awe of the people when they share what I, what I get to learn. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and it's f funny, too, you know, you're talking about this group and how long it had been here and, and the reasons for it. Uh, and, you know, that, that uh, there was a couple of different things that I had to deal with during that time. Um, not, not only did I have to deal with COVID like everybody else, but I had two types of cancer uh, and, and both of them uh, chronic uh, and uh, uh, so the, the the treatments that I was getting knocked out my immune system. So I literally had to had to uh, uh, had to be by myself. And I got out of the habit of going to meetings. Now isn't that funny? About six years into my sobriety, all of a sudden I'm not going to meetings again. Uh, I went to this meeting quite a bit in the first year, um, but it just started fading and fading and fading. And then I, I got into some projects and around the house. I I, uh, you know, I even got grass to grow. I've never got a decent, decent crop of tomatoes, but I got a lot of, a lot of grass growing. Uh, I'm sitting here in my shop uh, that I'm still trying to put together, keep tearing it apart and redoing it and getting it the way I want it. Uh, but um, uh, 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 but a fellow called me and said, you know, we started those meetings back up. And I said, yeah, I know. I've, I've kind of lost that love and feeling. And he said, well, I want you to, I want you to come back. And I said, okay. I'll give it a try. And, and you know, it was, ama it was just amazing. The same wisdom was there. Now, I don't think a lot about drinking anymore. I, I really don't. Um, but I still don't know how to live. Uh, I, still, I still don't understand how they can know so well uh, uh, about the things to do and not do. I, as a matter of fact, the, the program was so complicated to me that I decided I'm not going to try to learn it. I'm not going to try to figure this out. I'm just going to accept things. And, and I said, but I will try to take a little small part. And, and we just happened to be on the St. Francis prayer that day. And I said, uh, I will uh, I, a channel piece. That's a good thing. I'll, I'll do that. Love than to be loved. I'll, 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 I'll work on that. Understand than to be understood. Uh, I'll, I'll work on that. And then my favorite, where there's error, I may bring truth. <laughs> now, now, what I learned about that is, is that uh, I had I had to, to accomplish the first three before I was ever able to give uh, 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 any advice to anybody. And I say advice very carefully. It's where uh, where there's error, I may bring truth, but I still need to do it in the form 
of my experience, strength, and hope. I do not need to do it in the form of advice. And, and, and so, uh, so I just started sharing as honest as I could and, and being as honest as I could. And, uh, and, it, and it ended up, uh, ended up I, started, uh, I started growing. It was a good thing too, because I'd lost, I, I, I was gaining one family, but I'd lost another. Um, I used to, uh, I, I used to uh, uh, teach um, the senior high uh, Sunday school class, and I'd done it for years. Uh, and one of the ways that I tried to quit or to control my drinking before uh, was uh, I got in, I got into uh, this Bible, this two year long Bible study class, and that was a good thing and a terrible thing all at the same time because. Uh, um, I, I realized that uh, I started I, 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 with the senior highs. The, the one thing for sure is they're they're just too smart. They're they're way too smart to uh, to accept things uh, uh, that that maybe I used to accept when I was a child. And so uh, they would ask a question, and and we would uh, uh, I'd say, well, let's get our our topicals and our indexes and so on and. I'd have 50 kids in the class, so it was uh, it, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, but I did uh, learn pretty quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, uh, when I when I wasn't teaching them, I'd go to the I'd go to the uh, I teach the uh, adults, and uh, it just so happened that a few months earlier, uh, two of the two of the kids got together and now they were going to have a child. And one of the uh, one, one of the one of the people says uh, uh, commented about the sin, and and I said no, that's not what the Bible says. Uh, there is no such thing. Uh, it can't be because nothing can be. Uh, I said what it, what it, uh, I said what what the Bible says is that when you lay with a person, then you're married to that person. So there is no adultery. And she said, and uh, about four of, those, four of the women in that class just raised right up out of their chair. It was just unbelievable. It was almost magical. And I said, uh, and they were ready to come after me. And, and I said, they said, is this what you're teaching your kids? And I mean, the, the kids in the high school. And I said, I'm just teaching what the Bible says. Well, what, uh, you know, there's some other very touchy subjects. Uh, uh, suicide being one. Uh, Bible, uh, Bible wants to talk about that. And it's that the other. And I said, uh, and, and, and so I just told them that, uh, you know, so a lot of people tried to teach them that the, the suicide was uh, an unforgivable sin. And I said, no, that's not what the Bible says. And we went over that. So what ended up happening is uh, uh, the director of Christian education came and started sitting in on the class. Now, I was still I was I was I was I don't know how they let me in the church the way I was smelling, but they did. Uh, um, but we had a very interesting class. Um, we, I kind of let them teach themselves, showed them how to, how to use the indexes and topical Bibles and that sort of thing. And uh, I would let them bring up a topic. Well, this particular time they couldn't come up with one. And uh, I said, uh, I said, well, I'll pick one. And I said, I hate born again Christians. And the DC, I thought she was going to come right up. She, she just left her chair and was halfway toward me. And I said, just have a seat. Let's just, let's, let's see what. So we went through that, and and, uh, uh, and I said, so I said, uh, it's, it's biblical. Uh, what's my problem with it? And I told him. And so what happened was, from all that, is I lost my church family. They got rid of me, and um, that was a devastating time. Uh, I love my church family. I still do. I love the people, um, um, and I miss them. But thank goodness AA was there to pick up the pieces for that. And um, um, I, I had, uh, um, there was some time in between, uh, uh, but um, it, as time went on, I was, I was, I was making more friends and, and doing well and starting to grow in the program. But not growing nearly as much as as I should. Uh, uh, you know, I can I can uh, I can remember just recently. Uh, well, let me give you uh, let, let me give you a success of the story. I've told you about a lot. Of, uh, I, my wife, not too long ago, she did something that uh, really irritated me. Now I'm not going to tell you what it was because it's 
so infantile, so small, so ridiculous uh, that, that uh, I'm so thankful that I had an hour before I saw her to work through this. Or otherwise, I'd have been saying things I shouldn't have said. And then I, I ran it through my filter. Uh, my filter, is that being a channel of peace? No. Is that understanding than to be understood? No. Is that loving than to be loved? No. Um, so I went from thoughts of, I'm going to get rid of this. You know, you, you, I'm going to stop, you know, into 48 year old, 46 year old long marriage. I'm going to do all these things. And then an hour later, uh, I was, uh, um, I had worked through it. I had realized what my part was and what I needed to do. And, 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 uh, she just had a very traumatic, uh experience tra traumatic to her i mean she lost her keys for, for her car she was stuck and she couldn't get a hold of me because i didn't i don't handle my phone very well and uh, uh so she was uh, she was quite sharp now now she you know what what she did uh was apologize as soon as she came in and i was uh and, and i said you know i said uh, there's nothing to apologize for i understand uh, what happened and why it happened and, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, and I'm okay and and she and, and so so you see what AA did for me there it taught me I still don't try to learn all the program I just just those three things and 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 because of that I was able to go from I'm going to divorce that bitch to uh, I understand I know where you're coming from I know that you've had a stressful day and it's okay I don't have a problem. That's what I was able to go through in, in, in an hour. Now, I think after 10 years of sobriety, that that should be a lot quicker than that. I think I should be down to 10, 15 seconds instead of an hour because I can make a lot of mistakes in an hour. And, and I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to, to uh, so, so you see, even though I think I know something, I must not know it because I still, it, t it takes me an hour. I want 10 seconds. I want it in 10 seconds. I don't want it to take as long as it's taking. Um, the only way I know, the only way I know to make that happen is uh, to keep coming back, uh, to, uh, to stay in the middle of the group. Uh, I've got, um, I've got a posse that I go to my, my, uh, uh, my sponsor, uh, I'm able to uh, I'm able to call him and talk with him uh, uh, quite often. Uh, he's amazing because uh, uh, the whole time he sponsored me, uh, only one time has he ever gone outside of his own experience, strength, and hope. That's how he tells me what I need to do. He doesn't go out, he, he, you know. Well, this is what happened to me, and this is what I did. Uh, and and uh, what, what what a wonderful what a wonderful sponsor. But I also have this this posse group and this posse. They're they're I'm I'm ready to take their opinion and their advice, uh, uh, even though I don't ask for it because that is that is the group that uh, I'm, uh, you know I've become special friends with. Uh, and and sometimes I'm just too thick to get it. I can't get it with just experience, strength. No, somebody has to say, Paul, you're wrong. And, and, and that's this group. I call that my posse group. And there's there's four or five of us. We go out to coffee after the meeting or whatever, and that's where I get that advice. Um, it's been a wonderful program. Uh, I've, I've got so much further to go. Uh, I'm anxious to uh, I'm anxious to keep growing in the program. Unlike the first time I was in it, uh, I never did understand. My sponsor, uh, uh, you know, the first time I was in the program back in the '90s, he says. Uh, I was ready to take my fourth step, and after he listened very patiently, and after he was through, he said, Paul, you took a wonderful fourth step on your father. He said, um, now how about you? Well, I never did understand what he meant. I never did get it back then. I, I spent the whole time, st uh, stayed sober for 10 years, and, and never accepted the unmanageability of my life back then. I never accepted the unmanageability of my life for the first six months of of the program this time never did look this i never had DUIs and this sort of thing i told you that but 
but, but and and I have this uh, this uh, I live I live down on the river. It's, it's called the uh, Denial, and and I live down there, and, and it is amazing. I could remember the good times I had drinking, but somehow it just kept me from remembering the bad times. And, and so even though I don't didn't remember all these things, I, I, you know, one of the first things that came to me is, you know, the car in the lake and that, but that, that wasn't that, but I said, you know, I never, I never had a wreck. And uh, then I got to thinking there was one night I, I ran out and this doesn't happen. This didn't happen very often because I'd always keep a backup case of beer in the car, but I was caught uh, without it. And, um, uh, I'd already drank about a case, I guess, or something like that. And I, but I was out, and I and it was ten o'clock at night, and so I decided I'm gonna have to go get some more to drink. And uh, while you know, some sometime between eight or nine o'clock that night and and ten o'clock when I was getting ready to go to the store, somebody had planted a light pole right in the middle of my driveway, and uh, so when I was backing out, I took the whole side out of the car and half the front. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other time uh that was a 78 buick electric that was a good car until then uh remember having this oldsmobile station wagon and and, and here again i was one of those that the the thing slid down under it you know the the tailgate and um uh, it was uh, uh once again i had to go uh, make a, a beer run after i drank too much and, and i uh, i backed up uh, and, and I took the, uh, I smashed the rear end of that car. The tailgate wouldn't work anymore. The bumper was all up against it and what have you. And both of those happened in my driveway. So I guess I never counted those as accidents because the police never did come. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to go to the store, um, that night. That, that was, uh, but yeah, I still believe my life wasn't unmanageable. I'm so thankful uh for the rest of the steps uh I, I i i made it through it i'm not sure i've done as well as i should have uh uh the longer i'm in it the the more things pop up that that reaffirm uh, or confirm confirm that uh i'm uh, powerless over alcohol and that my life was unmanageable uh, it was unmanageable with my wife, my children. It was unmanageable with my health. It was unmanageable in every way. And until, until I got past that, until I started listening, going to meetings, going with my posse group, you know, uh, 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 so, so, so many good people, so many good people in that meeting. That's, 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 uh, uh, uh that's about all I've got. I, I I love the program. I love the people in it. I, I appreciate you all so much uh, for letting me share. And that's it.